Hey guys, it's Ruby. Now before we moved to Vegas, we came so often and brought so many friends that everyone was constantly asking us what they should do when they come to Vegas. We were the resident experts. Today, I am treating you all like my friends and family and bringing you the 20 absolute must do's when visiting Las Vegas. No matter what kind of vacation you're trying to have, there is something on this list you are gonna wanna know. Let me just uh, finish my drink first. First of all, this is definitely gonna be more than 20 suggestions. I'm gonna be listing all kinds of different recommendations for you guys. And you're not gonna be able to do everything that I'm listing here in one trip. I wanted to cover like a variety of bases. Some of you guys come here to party and get rowdy. And some of you come here just to gamble it up. And some of you are here to be a tourist and sightsee and eat. And so I wanted to have suggestions in every single category for you guys. We're gonna start with some daytime suggestions and things that are must do's when it is daytime. So number one, you absolutely wanna go swimming. This is huge for me. It's huge for people from the Midwest. I know people from the South and the West Coast, this maybe doesn't seem like as big a deal to go swimming on your vacation, but Vegas just does it different. The pools here are so beautiful. I do have a like 10 favorite pools list that shows all these amazing pool areas. And it's just the best atmosphere. They always have good music playing. Now, if you are willing to get up early enough to go get a free pool chair, then it won't cost you anything. However, if you do think you're gonna spend an entire day poolside, I would suggest possibly getting a day bed or a cabana, especially if you're with a group. That can be a great way to have a reserved space for you and your party. Usually they have a safe to put your things so that you can like make sure everything's protected when you go off and swim. And there's usually just like a minimum that you need to spend on food and beverage, which you're gonna do anyway if you're gonna be out at the pool all day. So that can be a really fantastic option. I just think the weather here in that absolutely dry heat, especially in the hot summer months, an entire day poolside for us on vacation is an absolute must in Las Vegas. Following up with that, if you are a part of my party crowd, my next must do is to check out a day club. If you have never done this before, I actually think day clubs are way more fun than a nightclub. It's essentially just a huge pool party. So there's gonna be DJs, sometimes there's headliners, and these really cool pool spaces, and it's just a huge party. We have had so much fun doing the day clubs. Again, if you are with a big group, I think it is best to rent a day bed or a cabana or a table. If you don't go for that option, we have done day clubs normally where we just do normal entry and then bring one of those little bags that puts your phone and your credit card in and just wear that around your neck. I think if you are in the mood to party, it is definitely something worth checking out. My next suggestion, hit a spa. My sister came last year at the end of March and it was unseasonably cold. It was just really gross outside. We ended up canceling our pool reservations and booking a spa and we had an even better day. You can book a day pass to a spa. You don't necessarily have to book a service and just enjoy the sauna and the steam room and the dip pools and all the different little amenities that they have in the spas here. They truly are amazing. My favorite right now is gonna be either Awana at Resorts World or the brand new Lapis Spa at Fountain Blue. Those are both absolutely gorgeous. And one of the things I really like is that they are primarily co-ed. A lot of the big spaces are for both genders and you don't see that in a lot of the older spas. And so if you're coming as a couple, it can be really nice that you can both spend time in the sauna, both spend time in the pool together. You're not gonna be separated because that could be a big bummer. But even if you're like a girl group, if you are here on a bachelorette, you've been partying, this is a great daytime activity when it's getting towards the end of your trip and you're really tired. Maybe you're drinked out, you don't wanna drink any more booze, you need to like, chill, relax, oh, a spa can be such a lovely activity, even in the summer, but especially if it is off season for the pools, I think a spa is an absolute must do. 
Okay, so we've done a ton of relaxing. You either tan at the pool, you hit the spa, what else? Well, I'm gonna say my next must do is to enjoy all of the free entertainment on Strip. I cannot stress enough that during the day, you can go around and spend very little money and have a lot of things to look at and do and then spend your money later on on nice dinners and nightlife, which we'll get to later. Some of my favorites, the conservatory, checking out the flamingo habitat. There are so many. I do have a whole video of all the different free must do's, but also just hotel hopping. That could even kind of be its own must do, like checking out all the different hotels. A lot of them are heavily themed or have these absolutely stunning lobbies and they're worth going to just to take a peek and look at. It can be a ton of fun. You're definitely gonna get your walking in, so I highly recommend wearing comfortable shoes. And you can have a few stops along the way. A couple of my recommendations, there's a few alcoholic beverages that I think are definite must-dos. Fat Tuesdays, if it is your first time and you've never been to Vegas and you've never had a Fat Tuesdays, it's an alcoholic slushy. Um, it's just very iconic. It's worth checking out. I also love the Bailey's Freeze, which you can get at O'Shea's inside the Link Promenade. That is like a boozy Wendy's Frosty. It's absolutely delicious. Or if you are an espresso martini gal, go to Sala 118. That is the lobby bar inside of the Venetian and get an espresso martini and they will print your picture on it for you, which is so cool. So you can have these little pit stops along the way while you're walking around exploring. Maybe you stop to gamble a little bit, but I think just walking strip, enjoying free stuff is a must do on a Las Vegas trip. Speaking of gambling, it needs to be its own must do. If this is your first time in Vegas or you have never gambled before, you have to try it. It's so much fun. Don't look at it as trying to win money. Look at it as another entertainment source. We always used to gamble in between events. We've all got dressed up. We're down on the casino floor. We would stop, play a few machines, have a drink, because they do give out free drinks before going to dinner. I think the best way to do this if you're here with a group is to either take turns playing the slots and watch each other and cheer each other on or even go in together as like a mini group pull. Very exciting and very fun when you're all in on it with the higher stakes. If slots are not your thing, table games are a blast. Um, if you are a beginner and you're a little nervous about it, Go to Downtown Grand, they have dollar blackjack or $5 blackjack. They also have $5 roulette and craps. The tables are always super busy and very lively and it's lower stakes because it's a cheaper minimum. The dealers there are really nice. They will like help you out if you're not entirely sure, but my cats are wreaking absolute havoc right now. Say hi, stop wreaking havoc. And my last gambling must do, I think check out video poker if you've never done it. My sister and I went up to the bar. We each put $100 in at the chandelier bar and we ordered espresso martinis. And we sat there for like two hours, had a few drinks and we both cashed out still with money in hand and had a really great time. So I think trying out your hand at gambling at least once in Vegas is a must do. I think you definitely need to check it out. This one also wants to be in the video. Say hi, we got two kitties, say hi. Can you guys chill, please? Please chill. That segues perfectly into my next must do. This is for my gamblers. If you are someone who comes to Vegas every year and brings your bankroll to gamble, go off strip and check out off strip casinos. The off strip casinos get new games first. So you're gonna see a totally different variety than you're gonna see on strip. And I do feel your odds are just a little bit better, especially on slots. Consider checking out Red Rock, Durango, Rampart, one of our favorites, our local Rampart. All of these just have totally different vibes too. It's a different atmosphere being off strip. And I think for my gamblers, it's absolutely worth checking out. My next must do, shopping. When my sister Addie comes into town, this is all we do all day long is go shopping. Her favorite are definitely the forum shops. You're gonna see a lot of the designer brands in there, but they also have Sephora, Aritzia, a couple of other clothing stores. If you want to just check out designer goods, you can absolutely just go in and window shop and take a peek. They're always really nice in there, even if you're not planning to buy anything but there's other shopping as well. There are some outlet shops. If you go kind of towards the arts district, just north of the strip, and they have like a Kate Spade outlet, a coach outlet, a couple of other outlets there. 
or if you go to just the Miracle Mile shops right in the center of the strip, you're gonna find H&M and Victoria's Secret. So they're shopping of all categories for all different price points. And for some people, you can spend all day shopping and have a ton of fun. I wanted to get a little bit of nature into our must-do list. And so my must-do is going to be Red Rock Canyon. The reason I picked this one is that it's actually really close to strip, whereas like the Grand Canyon, the Hoover Dam, those are quite a trek. They do take a long time to get to. You can get to Red Rock Canyon from the strip in like 30 minutes. It is a scenic drive and you do need to book a reservation for your car. You can do that right on your phone and you're just going to be able to drive the entire loop or you can stop at all the different trails and go hiking. And they have hiking from like easy all the way up to like really intense, like pro hiking level trails. It's absolutely beautiful. This is like desert landscaping at its finest. You get to see all the Red Rock Mountains. Even just the drive, if you are not in the mood to get very exercisey, <laughs> if you don't wanna get out and hike, the drive alone is gorgeous. You can stop at some of the drop-offs and take photos. So let's transition into nightlife and we can't have a must do list without talking about nightclubs. If you are young and in your 20s or you have never experienced Vegas nightclubs before, they're definitely a must do at least once. Some favorites of mine, Zook over at Resorts World is amazing. Omnia in Caesars Palace is incredible. And the brand new Live over at Fountain Blue. The newest clubs are always gonna be really hip and trendy and have a really good crowd. Now again, the best way to enjoy a nightclub is to get a table. If you have a large group, consider it because drinks are gonna be $50 a person and I'm not exaggerating, that's how expensive they are. But even if you do not want to do a table, maybe that's too expensive, maybe you are just coming as a couple, you can just get put on a VIP list by finding a promoter. If you go on Instagram and search the hashtag of the club you're looking for, the promoters will usually pop up. Ladies, you should not be paying cover, period. But if you can get on a VIP list, but gentlemen, you usually won't have to pay cover either. There are also companies here in Las Vegas where they have a shuttle bus and you can get on it and drink on the bus and then they drop you off at all the different clubs um, for a designated amount of time and you get to skip the lines. That's another option that you can do for nightclubs. I don't think everybody is gonna be into the Vegas nightclub scene. I honestly have just kind of outgrown it. I'm in my 30s and I'm just kind of over that stage. But if you've never done one before, and especially if you're a young person, they're a must do, you gotta check them out. For those of you that have done the club scene, you're over it, you don't really care, or that's just really not your thing, it doesn't sound like fun to you, bars and lounges in Vegas are an absolute must do. Bonus points, another must do is if you wanna rent a limo, if you're with a bunch of friends, and have that limo take you from each different hotel, they drop you off right out front, you can go to all the different bars, and then you can come right back. It is so much fun. A few that I absolutely love, Skyfall, the Chandelier Bar in the Cosmopolitan, Aft over at the Wynn, they have the Lake of Dreams show on their waterfall, it's absolutely awesome. Downtown Legacy Club is a gorgeous rooftop bar. The Carousel Bar in front of the Plaza is a really cool vibe. If you're looking for something club adjacent, you want it to have a club atmosphere, but you don't wanna pay those prices, Electra at the Venetian is awesome, and Gatsby's over at Resorts World, those both are gonna have like a DJ, dancing, that kind of atmosphere. Also on the point of limos, booking transportation from the airport can also be a ton of fun. Again, if it's your first time, especially if you're with a bunch of people, getting a limo to take you guys to the hotel is a ton of fun. Or even just booking car service if you're a couple, it can be really nice to have your transportation already taken care of and then you don't stress out about getting an Uber. Oh my gosh, the other day we were at the airport, the Uber pickup was like 400 people deep. I'm not even exaggerating, it was chaos. It's so stressful. And sometimes that means they can be even more expensive than the cabs, which means then you're gonna wanna take a cab and that's never great. So consider booking transportation. It's not terribly expensive here. Limos are actually like very competitive. There's a lot of companies. So the rates are usually fairly reasonable and doable. Oh, an absolute nightlife must do is to go to Fremont Street. I mean, there's a ton of must do's just on Fremont, but Fremont Street as a whole and going down there at night is a must, especially at night because during the day it's gonna be really quiet and the neons don't look good during the day. They look amazing at night with Viva Vision over the top. They play shows on that every hour. On weekends, there are free concerts at a bunch of stages all down the street. It's 
fabulous. There is so much to see and do. You can pay nothing and just walk around and enjoy the entertainment. All the different hotels are really close together, so it's really easy to pop in and out and gamble. I highly recommend like Golden Nugget if you're looking to do a very busy gambling scene. It's just awesome. It's so much fun. We usually do this on the first night of our trip. We would get here, do a lot of walking around and then go to Fremont Street that night. You have so much energy. You're ready to move around and sightsee and Fremont Street can be great for that day. So it is a definite must do on every trip. Our next absolute must do for nightlife, see a show. This is such a great thing to do in the evenings. If you're not a heavy partier, if you've been there, done that with a lot of the sightseeing, if you're all gambled out, a show is an excellent thing to do in the evening time. Some of my favorites, Atomic Saloon, it's a Spiegel World show. They also do Absinthe, but Atomic Saloon is my favorite. It's Western themed, that one's in the Venetian. I love O by Cirque du Soleil. All the Cirque shows are really good, but O is the one where they're in water. It's incredible. And then if you're a group of ladies, um, over at Sahara, they have Magic Mike. That's not normally my thing, but I did go with a friend and we really enjoyed it. It was an excellent, show. Vegas is known for their entertainment and there are so many. I wish I could see more. I wish I had more time because they're all incredible. So a show is a must do. Oh, our last nightlife must do, the Pepper Mill. The Pepper Mill is getting its own category because I love this place so much. It's one of my favorite spots in Las Vegas. The Pepper Mill has been here since the 70s. It was featured in Casino and the Fireside Lounge in particular is my favorite. This is a diner, but they have this back bar area with this fire pit with water and they have these crazy velvet couches in there and like wild atmosphere. It's kind of like a rainforest cafe. It's kind of like a strip club. It's great. <laughs> I absolutely love it. It is one of my favorite things about Las Vegas. If they ever tried to tear down the pepper mill, I would chain myself to the building. So it is an absolute must do. You have to check it out. Let's talk about some food must do's. You're gonna eat and the food options in Las Vegas are absolutely second to none. I will never be able to do every single restaurant. It's going to be impossible, but I am really gonna try. I have to say one must do is to do a dinner with a show. So this is gonna be dinner that also has like an entertainment aspect to it. Mayfair Supper Club, one of my absolute favorites. They do singing, dancing. It is loud. Like you don't even really talk to each other. You just watch the show. It's absolutely fabulous. That's over at the Bellagio. Super Frico is a psychedelic Italian American supper club located inside the Cosmopolitan. This is by the people who do Spiegel World shows. And while you're eating pizzas and pastas, they're going to come out and do all kinds of weird acts. They'll be on a unicycle. It's wild. It's a great time. And Lago again over at Bellagio. This one you can sit on a patio inside of the Bellagio fountain and the fountain goes off while you're eating and it is absolutely beautiful. So those are all excellent suggestions of entertainment while you eat. And then another dinner must do, you have to do a classic Las Vegas steakhouse. There are easily 70 amazing ones. I have a whole video of my 10 favorites. A couple of steakhouses I will recommend right now, Oscars at Plaza, classic, true Las Vegas Steakhouse and SW Steakhouse at the Wynn. Again, this has a view of the Lake of Dreams show on the waterfall. So you are getting dinner and a show, but you're also getting classic Las Vegas Steakhouse. One of the best steakhouses in Las Vegas. It's an absolute must. Just check out my steakhouses list. Pick one that appeals to you. They are an absolute must do. My next must do is not for everybody. It's especially not for first timers. I just don't think you're gonna have time to prioritize this, but a lot of you guys who watch my channel come to Vegas all the time. If you have not done the arts district yet, this is your sign that it is a must do to check out. This is one of my favorite areas in Las Vegas. The arts district is downtown. It's called the arts district because local artists have done a ton of murals on the sides of all the buildings, as well as a bunch of little galleries that have a bunch of different art inside. There's also antique malls here if you wanna go and look for some thrift shopping and some amazing dining. 
Esther's Kitchen is in the Arts District. It's amazing. I love the Pepper Club, Taco Tarian. Also, if you are into beer, they have all these awesome microbreweries right in the Arts District. You can do a little bit of a beer crawl. Abel Baker is one of my absolute favorites. They make the Atomic Duck beer. It's pretty famous here in Las Vegas. So all of these things make the Arts District just special. It's kind of more of a local scene. So if you're looking to get a little bit more of that local vibe, a little bit less touristy, I think the Arts District is awesome. You can also get a $10 tattoo down here, so. And another must do, we have to talk about the last day of your trip. Maybe you're checking out. I suggest brunch or specifically a brunch buffet. There are some great buffets here in Vegas. Some of them not so great, but my absolute favorites like the Win Buffet. Check your bags, get checked out of your room, go to Win Buffet, order some mimosas and just eat, get really full before your flight, sit with your friends, talk about your trip, you're gonna be exhausted, you're not gonna wanna walk around anymore. And if buffets aren't your thing, even just doing a brunch, Monami Gabby has the gorgeous brunch right outside, right in front of the fountains. Uh, Sedell's inside the Bellagio is right off the conservatory. That's an excellent place for brunch. There are such good options and I think it's a great way to end your trip. Ooh, I talked your ear off, my cats were chaotic. That was a huge list and it still doesn't encompass all of my favorite things. I think that could almost be its own video of just my specific favorites, even if they're not must do's. Let me know if that's something you guys would like to see. But I hope I offered you a list of just so many options and so many things to do and maybe a few things you haven't heard of. Please do comment what you consider to be the absolute must do's when you come to Vegas below. Thank you guys all so much for watching the video and I will catch you guys all in our next.